Hello, I'm Jay Jermaine Bay with Elodium Morris Pradium, Ante, Colorado. The acronym is ANTAC. I am the Chief Judge of Council of Court. Uh, today is Class 29, Class 29. What did we learn from Class 28? We started talking about injunctive relief order. And more is starting to learn about how to use the police power of the state. You're starting to learn now, Moors, that if you want to enforce your rights, when you're dealing with things such as the subject matter of the jab or traffic ticket or the IRS, when you're dealing with subject matter, what you're really talking about is jurisdiction. So your injunctive relief order through consular court that comes through your state can now stop any type of potential harm to your national. But what are we really talking about? If in fact, a foreigner is trying to perform harm to a Moorish national, what you're talking about is state rights. What are they doing first? First, they're infringing upon the rights of states. After they infringe upon the rights of the states, now they're infringing upon the rights of the nationals of that state. We the people, for the people of that state. Now the consciousness and the rights of all Moorish nationals of that state are now offended and must not defend themselves and reject anything the foreigners are doing to undermine our diversity of state political rights. So today we're going to talk some more about that today, uh, understanding that the basic subject matter is the jab, but we're, we're really talking about jurisdiction of the state. I'm trying to encourage Moors to come together as a collective to start putting together a state provincial government in order to secure and protect their sovereign state rights. So today we'll keep talking about that, okay? So as we always open up with our mission and vision, the mission and vision statement is to create the United States of Morocco again, right? And what are we doing, Morris? What we're doing is we're applying discipline because discipline determines our destination. But our destination of what, Morris? Let's be redundant. Of creating this desire, this desire to create Morocco again. Remember, Morocco, Morocco, more, Morocco. More Rocco. So this is more Rocco. More land. This is more land. This is the land of the Moors. More Rocco. You must understand Moors. This is the land of the Moors. All right? This is the original empire of Morocco. Don't get caught up in thinking about the political jurisdiction of the kingdom of Morocco, that's a political small jurisdiction in North Africa, i.e. a Kibalan, i.e. Asiatic land. Before the great super de Beer, before the land separated, the Pangaea, which is the lands all were connected at one time, this was the original land of Morocco. Okay, Moors must understand that. This is the original Morocco. Over there in North Africa, i.e. a Kibalan, is the second coming of Morocco. That's a political jurisdiction. That's an extension of Morocco. So never think that we are secondary to the king of Morocco. We are first. We are the primogenitor, aboriginal people of Morocco. All right? Go ahead, Mom. So is that like more of the rock, the rock of the Moors? Or yes. That, or is Rocco land? I'm just... Well, what I really want you to focus in on the fact is the word more. Okay. Can you start talking about Rocco as in Rocco? Yes, because we are the original uh, masons mm -hmm. to put together all these pyramids, those are rocks, boulders, megalithic stones. Right. Yes. However, when you look at the word Morocco, Morocco is a transliteration of the word Marrakesh. Marrakesh. Okay. Uh-huh. Marrakesh, Morocco. All these are transliterations of how they continue to trans, transliter, transliterate the language. Okay? All that comes from the Moabite, Moabitist people. All right? Moabite Canaanite. Okay? All right. So, how do we maintain the discipline of this? How do we now get into the discipline? All right? Let's talk about discipline. The discipline Moors is for the Moors to come together as a collective, 
put together an alliance within your own provincial government of your groups, put together the state of facts and judicial notice, which is your circle seven state of facts, okay? Let's be redundant more. What do we need in order to be de jure mores with our government? We need the state of facts and judicial notice, exhibit A, constitution, exhibit B, state seal, exhibit C, provincial state flag, exhibit D, empire Morocco flag, empire, most important word, of Morocco flag, exhibit E, allegiance and oath, exhibit F, public inauguration. That's what makes us de jure mores, all right? And for the record, for all the Moors who've been following and subscribing and sharing uh, about ANPAC and learning more about ANPAC, for those Moors out there that are on a quest to put together their federal government, their provincial state government, being a Republican form of government, through what? Inaugurations, right? Your inauguration comes from your elections, your, your votes, right? Moors, please understand, at home, ANPAC is working on a constitution right now for all Moors that have is what you call a template, a generic template. So Moors out there, reach out to ANPAC to learn more about the generic constitution that we have for you. Keep in mind, Moors, the constitution that ANPAC has is what you call birthright. So therefore, the constitution that we share with you is not for sale. There's no patron involved. The constitution is birthright because constitution comes from the mothers. It's what you call nature's law, common law. The constitution, constellation, is called cosmology. So therefore, this is birthright. So ANPAC would be more than happy to share our generic constitution with you. Uh, that way Moors can start to now quickly assess what a constitution is all about. The only thing we ask uh, from ANPAC is that you give us an opportunity to interpret the constitution for you explain it to you from the first page to the last page. So when you reach out to ANPAC, you can reach out to info at ampacgov.org. All right, that's A-M-P-A-C gov.org. And we'd be more than happy to talk to you, get an understanding of who you are, and then send you our constitution. That way at least you can understand our interpretation, the consciousness, the concept, and context of the Constitution, all right? That way we're all on the same page and perform our alliance together, all right? So I just want to let the, know, let the Moors know that because we recognize Exhibit A is what it's all about, Constitution. All right, let's continue. All right, so, though, so, so far, what have we been talking about? So today being Class 29, we'll continue with the same subject matter, really about jurisdiction, state rights, but the subject matter just happens to be the jab. So we're dealing with the jab, but keep in mind the jab is just subject matter, right? What are we really talking about? Jurisdiction of state rights and utilizing the power of the state to defend ourselves, defend our sovereignty, okay? So, so far we've been talking about state of facts, judicial notice, right? What was the next thing we talked about? That was from class 26. Then we started talking about the injunctive relief order. That's from class 28, right? So what will, we, what will we discuss today? Plain old order. What is that order? That order is going to be contempt of court order. Okay, so keep in mind, as the Moors start understanding and onboarding their states, I'm trying to give the Moors a snapshot of where we're going with all of this. Okay, what's the purpose of these documents? The first purpose is to understand state rights. The second purpose is to understand how to protect and secure your state rights. And that's through consular court. Remember what I told you, Moors. Judges are the gatekeepers of your sovereignty. They protect your sovereignty, okay? So this is the basic understanding that Moors must start to understand. These are the concepts, the step-by-step -step process we'll be going over, okay? as we start understanding the power of council court to protect our state rights. First, you got state of facts, judicial notice. We learned about that. Then you got number two, injunctive relief order. We learned about that. That was class 28. Then you got your contempt of court order. We'll learn about that today. But to give more than understanding, a snapshot. Where do we go from the contempt of court orders? Next, you're talking about notice of surety bond lien. Okay, that will be next. Number five, surety bond lien on deeds. We'll learn about that, okay? Number six, trespass on land. 
Number seven, confiscation of property. Number eight, sale of property. And number nine, satisfied court sanctions. So all this is a step-by-step -step process to understand, so that Moors understand where are we going with this due process of dealing with consul court against foreign states or foreigners or municipal corporations, i.e. your employer who's trying to give you the jab. This is going to protect your rights, okay, Moors? All right, so as we continue to talk about this, I will give more instructions up here, okay? So, this is the order. Keep in mind, Morris, where did we start? Let's be redundant. State of fact, judicial notice, but let's say they do not adhere to it. Okay, next up, injunctive relief order. We learned injunctive relief order is that the foreigners must immediately stop any type of usurpation, molestation, discrimination, or anything that's pending towards our Moorish nationals. But more specifically, what are they really infringing upon? State rights, okay? So we're stopping them from infringing on state rights because it's diversity of state rights, your political state rights. We'll learn about that. That's the injunctive relief order. Today we'll learn about contempt of court, okay? Now a lot of Moors are like, okay, what's contempt of court? We, we know what the word is, but we don't, do we really understand it? So today we'll use some forensics, some discernment, we'll learn how to read and understand this. Why is this important, Moors? Because consular court must always maintain the truth about the law. Consular court protects not only the sovereignty of your state, but consular court also must always be about common law, jurisprudence, trying to do things right. So keep in mind, Lord, when you come into this knowledge about statehood, everything is about love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So what we're utilizing is common law, jurisprudence, positive law of using our five principles. All right? Okay. So let's get into this. All right. Okay, Morris at home. Keep in mind, this is just a basic template, a boilerplate, okay, with a lot of, and all the letters in red are placeholders, okay? So this is now your third document that Morris was sent out in the event that now the foreigners are still usurping the injunctive relief order from the court. This would be the third document, okay? All right, so as Morris, I've already started to learn. This will be considered your seal, Moors. Up here to the left, you will have the empire, Moroccan flag, and to the right, you have your provincial state government flag, all right? And then obviously you have your seal in the middle, very similar to our brand here, right? Mother flag, state provincial flag, and seal. You wanna add the crescent and the moon, that's totally up to you. All right, got your placeholder, Moore state government name, Council Court of the State. Underneath that, you want to put a provincial state government under the existing and pre-existing sovereignty of the Moroccan Empire. It's very important, Morris. Okay? Now, we're getting into the case number. This is the case number that's still the same case number from the injunctive relief order. It's the same case number from your state of facts, judicial notice. All right? Same case number. Okay? Now, there's a little bit of change that we're going into now, okay? All right, so now, when we're dealing with the contempt of court order, here's how we set up the document. In the matter of constructive contempt of court, a judge, okay? So we're gonna read this document in its entirety one time, then we will go back and break it down. Fair enough? All right. So if I can have the mothers start with civil case number, we're going to read the entire document. I'm going to come back and break it down, okay? Civil case number in the matter of constructive contempt of court, a judge. Moorish state government name versus plaintiff. Plaintiff versus John Doe and Sarah Smith, Officer Williams, Employer's Company Name, 
governor's name and state of Contem contemnor contemnors very good continue order this contempt of consular court order in the jurisdiction of Moorish state government name the state on October 18, 2021, is hereby adjudged and served. The disobedience to the injunctive relief order dated October 1, 2021, shall invoke this constructive contempt with prejudice. prejudice. The consular court shall enforce sanctions in pursuance to the Act of Algeciras of 1906, Articles 101 and 102. The consular court finds John Doe, Sarah Smith, Officer Williams, employer's company name, governor's name, and state of. The contemnors willful ignorance regarding the court orders to mitigate the friendly application of difference in conjunction with constitutional principles, political state rights, Consular relations per the Bilateral Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1836, Articles 20, 21, and 24, including the Charter of the United Nations, 1945, Article 73, and the breach of the Vienna Convention, 1969, Article 53 and 61, etc. The contempt of court sanctions pertaining to John Doe. Sarah Smith, Officer Williams, employer's company name, governor's name, and state of. In pursuance to the Act of Algeciras, 1906, Articles 102, is to stand conviction, and each foreigner shall be sentenced to a $25,000 fine, 25000 to be paid in silver coin or a silver check or a cashier check yes. to the counselor court made out to MSGM, counselor court within 25 days, ordered this Islamic date of 11, Rabbi Al-Awal, 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 1443, October 18, 2021. Kendrick Hakeem Bey, Quasi, Kazi, Kazi, Chief Judge, Counselor Court, Morris State Government Name, Counselor Court at Morris State Government Name, gov.org, or counselor.court at msgmgov.org. CC, John Doe, Sarah Smith, Office, Officer Williams, Employer's Company Name, Governor's Name, and State of. All right, thank you, Mother. That was a good reading. All right, Mother, let's go back to the top and break it down. Okay, Mother, so if more is at home, understand um, this is about a two page document. AMPAC has about a four page document. So when more put together provincial state governments, AMPAC be more than happy to share this birthright to more. All right, well, that's more, let's use some discipline and put together the state governments. We'll work with you on that. We'd be more than happy to share these documents with you, okay? All right, uh, more than home. So let's, let's go ahead and study the power of council of court, okay? These are very powerful documents, more. This is nothing to be played with, okay? We must understand the power of council of court, all right? So before we get into reading of council of court, we must always be reminding of something. This is the Bilateral Treaty of Peace and Friendship, year 1836, okay? We're using that treaty right now, okay? These are actually the words from the 1786 treaty, but we're going over all the, not all the articles, but Article 1 of the treaty, because Article 1 never changed, okay? So let's read and understand what is our delegation authority orders to be able to utilize council court. Right? Everything must go back to its origin. That's what Moore's are trying to do, get back to our origin of state government that Moore's had at one time. But what are we really trying to get back to? All right, so this is part of the preamble of the treaty. 
This is the treaty of peace and friendship established between us and the United States of America. That was, that's the party. Which is confirmed and which we have ordered to be written in this book and sealed with our royal seal at our court of more Rocco. On the 25th day of the blessed month of Shaban in the year 1200, trusting God it will remain permanent. Okay? So what's happening, Moors? Moors are now trying to get back into what? Order. 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 Because we ordered the establishment of the original 13 colonies to have a, what you call a cohabiting treaty with Moors. Keep in mind, Moors, the colonists have every right to be in Morocco because they have a lease agreement to remain in the land of Morocco. So whose obligation it is to maintain that lease agreement? That's the Moors obligation. How do we do that? We do that through our royal seal at our court of Morocco. So everything's about the courts, Moors. Everything started in the courts. We must get back to courts. Article 1. We declare that both parties, who are the parties? Morocco, Moors, Morocco, Moors, Moor, Rocco, Moors, have agreed that this treaty consisting of 25 articles shall be inserted in this book and delivered to the Honorable Thomas Barclay, the agent of the United States now at our court. Moors must get back to our court, with whose approbation it has been made and who is duly authorized on their part to treat with us concerning all the matters contained therein. So all the matters, all the matters. What includes all the matters? Our court. What about our court? It's about the royal seal and our court of Morocco. Moore's got to get back to courts. These are the instructions, Moore's. We've got to get back from where we failed. When we fail, what did we lose? We lost our governments, and our governments had courts. So we had to put, back, put the governments back together and utilize consular courts, our courts. Okay, Morris? Okay, Morris. Back to origin. What's the origin? Consular court. We're getting back into de jure status, Morris. In proper persona. Our status now is getting back into sovereignty of understanding how to utilize government. Okay, Council Court of the State. Got your civil case number. In the matter of constructive contempt of court, a judge. Okay, so let's break this down more. We're going to learn about what constructive contempt of court is and a judge. Okay, let's learn about this more. As more start learning how to utilize Council Court, we have to also understand these words, okay? Moors, excuse me. Moors have to learn how to read. We have to stop pronouncing words. If you say, see a word, so-called read a word, and you don't understand it, you must stop and look it up, Moors. We have to do that so we have a fundamental understanding of that word. We must control our linguistics, okay? A judge. Okay, if I had a mother's read, please. A judge to pass on judicially to decide, settle, or decree, or to sentence or convene, condemn uh, case law, judgment of a court of contempt, jurisdiction, equivalent of convicted and sentenced. Stop. Okay. So what have we learned about a judge? It's to pass on judicially, that's your court, to decide, settle, or decree, or to sentence, or condemn. So our contempt of court document is a sentence, it is to condemn an act by the foreigners, whether it's their foreign state, or one of their foreign municipalities, which is their, all their corporations, we're dealing with foreigners, okay? So you must understand, a judge means to sentence, okay? Judgment of a court of contempt jurisdiction. We're talking jurisdiction laws. So if you don't have the jurisdiction, you can't have constant court. 
We don't have constant court, you must have a state. But if you're talking state, you're talking constitution. And through that constitution, you're talking jurisdiction, which means you can use the power of what? Court. Okay? Competent, competent, competent jurisdiction. What does that mean? More time must have real governments. You must have your elections. Vote, elections. Then have your public inauguration with your three branches of government. Judgment of a court in competent jurisdiction, equivalent of convicted and sentenced. And that's what the judge can do with a contempt of court document. The judge, all by itself, can now sentence a foreigner. And keep in mind, foreigners also their state. State of is a foreigner. Or their individual citizens is a foreigner. Or the cop corporations that are in their jurisdictions are all foreigners to Moors, Moors nationals. Okay? So what are we talking about right now? Right here. So in the matter of constructive contempt of court, a judge, what does a judge mean? That the court has already sentenced the following people that it's going to talk about, the following foreigners. All right? So it's already letting them know when the foreigners receive this document, as soon as they read it, they say, oh, man, somebody's been sentenced. That's what you must understand. A judge, you've already been sentenced, you've been condemned, okay? You've been sentenced, you've been condemned. You let them know off the top, what's the subject matter? What's the subject matter? What's the matter? Constructive contempt of court, all right? We're gonna get into this word constructive in just a moment. You've been a judge, all right? Okay. Okay, Morris. Now, right here, we've got the foreigners. But notice the foreigner status has changed. It was plaintiff and defendant. Now, it's plaintiff and contemners. Contemners. Who are the contemners? Those are being held in contempt. Contemners. Okay, their status just changed. So what do we do, Morris? We just changed the status. We were talking subject matter of the jab. Now, because the foreigners did not obey the state of facts, judicial notice, they ignored it. They did not obey the injunctive relief order, they ignored it. Now, council court now is taking over now changing them from being defendants to contemplators. What just happened? See, now it's, it's not about the jab no more. Now council court is dealing with them saying, you disobeyed an order. Now we're just going to stick to just the power of the state and the court telling you now, you get, you're getting ready now to deal with fines, penalties, and confiscation. We're not even talking about the jab. We're not talking about traffic ticket no more. We're not talking about the IRS no more. We're going straight into this. Council court just took over, 100%. All right? We're learning about this word contemplar now, okay? Contemplar. This is fourth edition. I do apologize, more than home. This is fourth edition. Black Law Dictionary, even for the word, a judge, fourth edition. Okay, mother, we can read the word contemplar. Contemplar. One who has committed contempt of court. All right, so it's a short read. Contemptor, one who has committed contempt of court. Okay? Well, what is contempt? Having no respect for the court's order. That's correct, Mom. So, contempt, as we all know the basic understanding, let's get into a little bit more of the law definition of it, right? Where we get the proper concept of it, okay? All right, Mother, if you can read contempt for me. Contempt of court. Any act which No, 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 no. Stop. Hold up. Back up. Oh, only contempt. Oh, oh I'm okay, sorry. Okay, let's start it. Hold up. So, Mother, if you can read the word contempt for me. A willful disregard or disobedience of a public authority. All right. So, easy to read. A willful, willful, willful disregard or disobedience of a public authority. 
authority. This is a powerful sentence for us. We're going to learn about the word willful, but it's a disregard of what? The consul court orders. It's a disobedience of what? Consul court orders. And what is consul court? A public authority. We're dealing with nothing but private municipal corporations pretending to be public authorities. But that's all right. We classify all of them as foreigners nonetheless. So these foreigners are doing what? Willfully disregarding or disobeying of our public consular court authority. That must be understood. We're a public government. We're for the people, by the people. We're not a corporation. We're organic. We're about common law, jurisprudence for natural born people. Not natural born with a hyphen. That's a compound adjective. Talking about natural born flesh and blood. All right? So what is it, the contempt of court, the contempt is based upon what, Morris? Let's go back. Let's, let's be redundant. The injunctive relief order that told them to stop. They didn't stop. So if they, if they didn't stop, that means they're in contempt because they willful disregard or disobedience of what? The injunctive relief order. They came from a public authority. That's why Morris must be de jure, not de facto. Because if you're de facto, you can't enforce public authority. You can only be public authority if, in fact, you're de jure. Okay, Morris? Okay, Morris. Let's also read the definition of contempt of court. Because that's what this is all about. This document is called contempt of court. What are we talking about right now? Number three, contempt of court order. Okay, that's what we're studying right now. Mother, if I can have you read contempt of court. Any act which is calculated to embarrass, hinder, or obstruct court in administration of justice, or which is calculated to lessen its authority or its dignity. Ex parte, case law. Oh, case, case law. Committed by a person who does any act in willful contravention of its authority or dignity, or tending to impede or frustrate the administration of justice, or by one who, being under the court's authority as a party to a proceeding therein, willfully disobeys its lawful orders or fails to comply with an undertaking which he has given. Okay, thank you, Mother. All right, so let's get a basic understanding, Morris. It's any act, any act, which calculated to embarrass, hinder, or obstruct court an administration of justice. So you must understand, as soon as they get in the way of the injunctive relief order, they do not obey. Remember, Morris, the reason why we keep talking about the treaty, what's the original jurisdiction? Royal Seal and our court of Morocco. That's the original jurisdiction. So we're talking our jurisdiction of our courts, right? So they're trying to embarrass Moors. They're trying to hinder or obstruct our Moors courts. Administrations of justice. We're trying to administer justice, right? Because we're de jure, we're not de facto. We're de jure once we've gone through our public inaugurations, have our constitution. What else do we have here? Committed by a person who does any act in willful contravention of its authority or dignity or tending to impede or frustrate the administration of justice. Isn't that what they try to do to us, Moors? They try to act like they don't know what the hell we're talking about. That's okay. Use the power of the pen. Don't argue with the Moors. Use the power of the pen. All right? or by one who, being under the court's authority as a party to a proceeding therein. The foreigners don't want to accept the fact that they come under consul court authority. Why? Because the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1787 and 1836, Article 20, automatically put the colonists under the authority of the Moroccan courts. What did we learn that at? 
under the royal seal at our court of Morocco, the colonists agreed to come under the great seal of the Moroccan courts. All right. Let's start here. Being under the court's authority as a party to a proceeding therein, will willfully disobeys. They disobey the court order. It's lawful orders or fail to comply with an undertaking which he has given. Who's given it? Cost of court. So automatically they're in contempt of court because they fail to understand the jurisdiction of the Moore state. Then they fail to accept the, what's called the state of fact judicial notice. And then they stop. They did not stop based upon the court order of the injunctive relief order, all right? So they failed on, on every behalf of understanding jurisdiction. We're talking jurisdiction. Okay, Morris, at home. There are two different types of contempt of court, all right? Let's learn about that a little bit. Classification, okay, mother? Con classification. Contempts are of two kinds, direct and constructive. Direct contempts are those committed in the immediate view and presence of the court, such as insulting language or acts of violence, or so near the presence of the court as to obstruct or interrupt the due and orderly course of proceedings. These are punishable summarily. They are also called criminal contempts but that term is better used in contrast with civil contempts. Constructive or indirect contempts are those which arise from matters not occurring in or near the presence of the court, but which tend to obstruct or defeat the administration of justice. And the term is chiefly used with reference to the failure or refusal of a party to obey a lawful order, injunction, or decree of the court laying upon him a duty of action or forbearance. Thank you, Mother. Okay, so what we've learned is on the contempt of court, contempt, two types of contempt, but the one that we're going to focus in on today is what you call constructive, constructive contempt, okay? Let's go back to the document. We're talking constructive contempt of court. That's the subject matter. That's being sentenced, condemned, constructive contempt of court. Okay, so what's constructive contempt of court? Constructive or indirect, meaning the court didn't see it, but the court knows there's been an infraction because when the court sent out the injunctive relief order, the action, the harm, the hazardous thing the defendant was doing, they're still doing. Okay? And the time frame for the defendant has expired for them to come now and petition cost the court to deal with the mediation or litigation of that subject matter. And once they don't come to court to deal with that, cost the court, that's also a breach of the injunctive relief order. Because in that injunctive relief order, we tell them, you must petition now to cost the court because we're claiming the jurisdiction, all right? So constructive or indirect contempts are those which arise from the matters not occurring in or near the presence of the court. Meaning it didn't happen in the courtroom, it happened outside of the court. But which tend to obstruct or defeat the administration of justice. So they're still maintaining their usurpation, discrimination, and molestation of the Moorish National as well as the Moorish State. And the term is chiefly used with reference to the failure or refusal of a party to obey. Look at that word, obey. Obey. Bay, B E Y, the bays. You must obey the bays. A lawful order. So they fail refusal of a party to obey a lawful order. 
the injunction, then we might not buy the injunctive relief, the injunction or decree of the court laying upon him a duty of action or forbearance. Okay, so that must be understood, Morris. This is what you call a constructive contempt document we're dealing with right now, because they did something outside of court to try to embarrass the court, hinder the court, what you call supervening impossibility of performance of the court. Okay, we're learning about that today, all right? So those are your definitions, it's contempt, contempt of court, okay? All right, boys gotta go back and study these things. All right, let's continue. So look at, look at all we learned just from understanding the word contemptors. <laughs> all right, it's a lot to learn more. We learn a lot. This is how we protect our state rights though. This is very important information. Okay, the order. Listen, Morris. You're just giving a plain old order. We're not talking about injunctive relief order. We're not talking about state of facts, judicial notice. We're just going straight into an order. We're not messing around anymore. It's just an order. We've given them chances to deal with mediation. The injunctive relief order was an opportunity for arbitration before getting into strict litigation. That's what we're dealing with right now. We just got into strict litigation. Okay? All right, if I had a mother, excuse me. Yeah, well, I'll read it now since y'all read it the first time. All right, here we go. This contempt of constant court order, okay, in the jurisdiction of the Moorish government named the state on October 18, 2021, remember more these just placeholders, is hereby adjudged and served. What does a judge mean? Sentenced, condemned, and now they've been served. Certified mail, sir. Okay, who are you serving? All the foreigners that's on the docket. This disobedience to the injunctive relief order dated October 1st, 2021, whatever the date is of your injunctive court order, that's the date you put there, shall invoke this constructive contempt with prejudice. With prejudice. With prejudice. Why am I pointing that out? Most Moors don't understand the fundamental understanding of this word with prejudice versus without prejudice. With prejudice, without prejudice. With prejudice, without prejudice. We're going to get into that today, okay? Now keep in mind, this order of contempt of court says with prejudice. Watch this, Moors. When we put together an injunctive relief order, what did we say to them? We said to them, we gave them without prejudice, right here, without prejudice. Let me expand it. Okay, more than home. Remember, this is your injunctive relief order. It said, without prejudice, without prejudice. And now, the contempt of order says that this is with prejudice, with prejudice. We're going to learn about that today, okay? Why is this important to understand? Because a lot of Moors put this on their documents. They'll say, all rights reserved without prejudice. But they really haven't studied what does without prejudice mean. We'll study that today because Moors at home who aspire to now be the consular court Kazi must understand how do you use this word with prejudice versus without prejudice. Let's learn about that today. Okay, all right, Morris. This is Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. All right, reference points. So this is with prejudice. With prejudice, which is on the contempt of court document. Let's understand why we put with prejudice on there.
versus without prejudice. Let's learn, all right? How the mother read, please, with prejudice. The term as applied to judgment of dismissal is as conclusive of rights of parties as if action had been prosecuted, prosecuted to final adjudication, adverse to the plaintiff. All right, thank you, mother. Okay, so what's happening? With prejudice, the term has applied to judgment of dismissal is a conclusive of rights of parties as if action had been prosecuted to final adjudication adverse to the plaintiff. Okay, so what's happening? The word with prejudice in common language means that when the judge says with prejudice, it means that there is no recourse for the plaintiff or defendant to take it to a higher court that the order from the judge is final. I say again, the order from the court is final. I say again, that the order from the court is final. Okay, it can't be moved now to a higher court because it's a final judgment. Let's read it again. With prejudice, the term is applied to the judgment of dismissal is a conclusive, see the word conclusive? It concludes, it ends, of rights of parties as if action had been prosecuted to final. See the word final? It's final adjudication, adverse to the plaintiff, okay? So it's a, what you call a final prosecution. It's conclusive. What does that mean? Let's go back to the document. What's happening? With prejudice, what's the pre with prejudice mean? That the constructive contempt court order is final. Meaning the foreigners can't come in and come to court after the fact and say, can we appeal this? Can we have some redress and talk about it? No, it's final, it's with prejudice. It's with prejudice, it's final. It's conclusive. Why is that important to understand, Morris? because we gave them a chance in the injunctive relief order to now come and deal with what they call arbitration to talk about it without prejudice, meaning they could have came to the council court, had an appeal, if they didn't like what was happening, now they could, without prejudice, they could have now appealed it to a higher court. It gave them what you call an opportunity now to still keep fighting the case. We're going to learn that when we read the word definition of without prejudice. It means you get an opportunity to keep fighting the case. You keep appealing and appealing and appealing and appealing. Y'all remember when uh, Barack H. Obama, the president of the Corporation of the United States, had put together what he called the um, his health insurance, Obamacare. You remember when the so-called Republicans kept appealing it. They appealed it almost 60 times. They kept trying to find loopholes to defeat Obamacare. That's because every time the Supreme Court would always put without prejudice based upon their decision, meaning the Republicans keep coming back and appealing it, trying to find a way to defeat Obamacare. As soon as you see the words without prejudice, that means you gave the, the plaintiff or the defendant an opportunity to keep fighting. We're going to learn that, okay? So when counsel court says, mm, where is it? <laughs> okay, here it is. So when counsel court says, with prejudice, it's over. They can't appeal it, all right? Let's go on now to the next definition. All right, now let's read without prejudice and this will start making sense to you now, okay? We're taking our time with if we have a mother read without prejudice, Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. Without prejudice, where an offer or admission is made without prejudice, or a motion is denied or a suit dismissed without prejudice, it is meant as a declaration that no rights or privileges of the party concerned are to be considered as thereby waived or lost, except insofar as may be expressly conceded or decided.
A dismissal without prejudice allows a new suit to be brought on the same cause of action. All right. What did we just learn? Let's go back. Okay. Without prejudice from a consul court means that the judge gives the plaintiff or defendant an opportunity to keep appealing it and challenging the final order of the court. Let's read about that. With prejudice, where an offer or admission is made without prejudice, quote unquote, or a motion is denied or a suit dismissed without prejudice, quote unquote, is a is a meant as a declaration that no rights or privileges of the party concerned are to be considered as thereby waived or lost, except in so far as may be expressly conceded or decided. So what does that mean? That the party hasn't lost any rights to still appeal. To say, I don't like the final verdict, I'm gonna appeal to try to see if I can get the court to change their mind or the state to change their mind. So that's what without prejudice means, okay? But more specifically, they get into a little bit more better definition on the second page. Okay, right here, it gets a little cleaner in understanding. A dismissal without prejudice, quote unquote, allows a new suit to be brought on the same cause of action. What does that mean? You can keep bringing another suit on that same subject matter. You don't like the final verdict? No worries, appeal it. So without prejudice allows the plaintiff or defendant to keep coming back to try to challenge the final decision of the court as many times as they want. It's perpetual, okay? So without prejudice means the case is still alive, it's still open for redress, for appeal. Okay, that's without prejudice. With prejudice means that it's what? Final. There's no appeal. Why is that important, Morris? Because under this order, when we hit them with the contempt of court order, which is a fine, a penalty, we'll learn about that, they have no ability to appeal it. Because they were already given two documents prior to this third one. What was the first document? state of facts judicial notice. They had an opportunity for redress then. Then the second document we said injunctive relief order. They chose to ignore it. Okay, once we get the contempt of court order, now they don't have the ability for redress. They can't appeal this. They can appeal here. They can appeal here. So they can't appeal here because it's a direct order. It's final. It's very important for us to understand that. Okay? All right. So let's take it from the top. The contempt of council court order in the jurisdiction of Moore State Government name, the state, on October 18, 2021, is hereby adjudged and served. The disobedience to the injunctive relief order dated October 1, 2021, shall invoke this constructive contempt with prejudice. The council court shall enforce sanctions in pursuance to the Act of Algeceras of 1906, Article 101 and 102. The council court fine. So. Let's be redundant. We've already read about the Act of Algeceras, 1906, Articles 101 and 102, right? We've read about this. We've been very redundant. Okay. Let's be redundant, Morris, because this is a, these are powerful articles that Morris can use to their defense through the state. So if I can have Mother read, this is the Act of Algeceras, 1906, Article 1, Mother, please. Article 101, the Moorish Customs Authorities shall directly inform the diplomatic or consular agents of any violation of this regulation, which may have been committed by those under their jurisdiction, in order that they may be prosecuted before the contempt court. Customs. All right, stop. The competent, competent court. Competent. All right. So what are we talking about in Article 101? Why are we telling them 101? Because we're talking jurisdiction, jurisdiction, jurisdiction of the competent court. Okay? We're talking Moorish 
competent courts, which is the jurisdiction of the state. All right, that's why 101 is important. Why? We're letting them know the jurisdiction under our delegation authority orders to now utilize contempt of court sanctions. We're talking sanctions, all right? We're talking sanctions. Continue, Mother. Similar violations by more subjects shall be brought directly by the customs before the Sharifan authority. A, dele a delegate of the customs shall be charged to follow the legal proceedings in case pending before the several jurisdictions. All right, thank you, Mother. So we're talking about the Sharifan authority, Sharifan authority, that's Moorish authority, okay? Remember, Sharifan is just government authority, all right? Or the Moroccan authority, just different names, semantics, okay? A delegate of the customs shall be charged to follow the legal proceedings in cases pending before the several jurisdictions, okay? So we're talking jurisdiction. Now let's get into 102, this is very specific. Now here's where we're talking about the fines and penalties through consular court, through the contempt of court. Contempt of court means what? You got to pay a fine because you've embarrassed the court. You've hindered the performance of the court, right? Disobeyed, you got to pay a fine. Let's talk about fines. Mother, if you can read 102, please. Article 102. Every confiscation, fine, or penalty must be imposed on foreigners by consular jurisdiction and on Moorish subjects by Sharifan jurisdiction. Okay, more. so this is two parts. First is what? Confiscations, fines, and penalties must be imposed on foreigners. They must do that. That gives us a jurisdiction. These are specific instructions that Moors can follow. Okay? But it's also a second part. So it's on foreigners by consular jurisdiction and on more subjects by Sharif and jurisdiction. Listen more. See, the United States of America always knew that it was only the Sharif and authority, Moroccan authority, the Moroccan government were the only ones that could punish more subjects. They always knew this. But they undermined that. And they kept more than the jurisdiction of the United States of America. Why? Because it says more subjects. What does that mean? Moors would call themselves Negro, Black, and Color. They wasn't Moors. But now Moors are calling themselves Moors, but they're still more subjects. You must be a Moorish national in order to enforce your Moroccan rights through the sovereignty of the state, all right? But the United States of America has always known that more subjects should have been dealing with Sharifan jurisdiction, all right? Okay, more. let's get back to point. So, right here, the consul court should enforce sanctions pursuant to the Act of Algiers of 1906, Article 101 and 102. The consul court fines. Oh, wait. What does sanctions mean? We all have a basic understanding of sanctions, so what does it mean in law? Sanctions. Let's read about sanction. Mother, can you read sanction? Sanction. Now, in the original sense of the word, a penalty or punishment provided as a means of enforcing obedience to a law. In jurisprudence, a law is said to have a sanction where there is a state which will intervene if it is disobe disobeyed or disregarded. Therefore, international law has no legal sanction. Sweet. So let's stop right there. What did we learn this far? Sanction, in the original sense of the word, is a penalty or punishment provided as a means of enforcing obedience to a law. So that's what sanction is. So when break the law, there's a sanction. In jurisprudence, a law is said to have a sanction when there is a state which will intervene if it is disobeyed or disregarded. Do you hear that, Morris? The state, the state, the state will intervene. Morris got to catch this. How do you put sanctions on foreigners? Okay, 
Gotta read the instruction. What did the instruction say? The state will intervene if, it's, if it is disobeyed or disregarded. Moore's been out there putting liens on foreigners and never had a state provincial government to enforce their liens. That's okay, those were exercises. Now how do we get back to a de jure status to enforce those liens? Okay, the state will intervene. The power of the state, if it is disobeyed or disregarded. When the state is disobeyed or disregarded, sanctions come after that. That must be understood, Morris. All right? So the consular court of that state yes. would intervene. Correct. Okay. All right? So the consular court is subordinate to the state. Right. But the consular court and the state work hand in hand. Thank you, Morris. Okay, let's take it from the top. This contempt of council court order in the jurisdiction of Moore State government name, the state, on October 18, 2021, is hereby the judge and served the disobedience to the injunctive relief order dated October 1st, 2021, shall invoke this constructive contempt with prejudice. The council court shall enforce sanctions in pursuance to the Act of Alpha Sarah's 1906, Articles 101 and 102, the Consular Court finds. Now, here's what we're going to find. Who are we finding? Now, we get right into now pointing out the foreigners, okay? John Doe, Sarah Smith, Officer Williams, employer's company name, governor's name, and state of. The contemptors, not defendants. Their status has changed. Now Council Court is dealing with them. It's almost like Council Court versus the foreigners. That must be the concept. It's Council Court now versus the foreigners because they violated the court's consciousness and justice of the court. We're not talking subject matter of the jab no more. Now they disobeyed the court, court order. Now the court takes over on behalf of the state. We're not even talking about the Moorish National more. You gotta catch this more. We're not talking about the Moorish National jab no more. Now we're using the power of consular court that has taken over now as the person through that department of consular court now is consular court versus the contemptors. You gotta understand the consciousness of consular court. We ain't talking jab no more. No subject matter. No speeding ticket, no IRS. Go ahead, Mark. So it went past the state to the consular court, meaning no, that the state is always in control. Okay. But the state is protected by consular court. What I'm trying to impress upon you is now we're not talking about the jab no more, or the traffic ticket, or IRS. Now consular court takes over and say, you disobeyed consular court. Never mind that jab. No, no, no. You listen. You disobeyed consular court. So now, now consular court has changed the narrative. You gotta catch it. So the narrative has changed because they violated state rights. It ain't about the jab no more, state rights. You see how, how we've used counterintelligence now since they we knew they were going to ignore number one. More than likely, there's a high probability they were going to ignore number two. Now under number three, we're telling them verbatim you can't appeal this, it's going to stick. Now we've changed the narrative to saying you disobeyed a court order. Now you disobeyed the court. So it kind of like removes the plaintiff, right? No, it removes, yes, exactly. Okay. That is correct. I guess that's what I was meaning, like it removed the state, but yeah, it so removes the, the plaintiff and they come in place of the plaintiff at yes. this point. Yes, right. The contemptor is the plaintiff now. No, no, the contenders are the defendants, defendants, the foreigners. Yes, yeah, still the foreigners. So the, the contender the, is the foreigner. The Correct. plaintiff. That's what I meant. That's yes. what I said. The contender has become, instead of the plaintiff, it's the contender. The contenders are the defendants. Correct. No, you no, keep saying plaintiff. plaintiff. No. No, the plaintiffs would have been state of Moorish. That was the original. Yeah, all right. Let's go to the top. Okay, there you go, brother. 
So oh, the plaintiff. Okay. So the plaintiff state. changed to the counselor court. Okay, right. Got it. So now, in theory, now the new plaintiff is counselor court because okay, they changed the narrative. It. You see? That's what Moore's got to understand. This this is a chess game. And then the defendants um, changed to the contenders. Exactly. Because they made a contempt of court. Correct. All right. But with, and so without the state being in existence, the nation, there could be no counselor court. That's correct. It's all about the state. They claim jurisdiction through the Constitution. Thank you, Mother. All right. Wait, I'm confused. Say that again. That because there is a nation with the Constitution, the flag, what is the state ain't? That's the Empire. state, right? Ampeg. That's why there's a there can be a council a counselor court. court. Correct. You can't have counselor court without the state. That's correct. Good job, Major. All right, let's continue. Okay, so from the top, John Doe, Sarah Smith, Officer Williams, employer's company name, governor's name, and state of the contemptors. Status just changed. We've changed the narrative. Now they're no longer defendants. They still defendants dealing with the state. But now the contemptors dealing with the court. We change the narrative. Willful ignorance regarding the court order to mitigate the friendly application of difference in conjunction with the constitutional principles, political state rights, constitutional relations per the bilateral treaty of peace and friendship, 1836, articles 20, 21, and 24, including the Charter of the United Nations, 1945, Article 73, and the breach of the Vienna Convention, 1969, Article 53 and 61, etc. Okay, let's break it down. All right, so. Willful, right? What are we talking about? Willful ignorance. Most people have a basic understanding of willful ignorance. But let's understand it from a law perspective. Let's get into some forensics, right? Forensics. All right. Willful. We're talking willful ignorance, right? What does ignorance mean? Ignorance is a compound word to ignore. Ignore. To ignore. To ignore. Rents. What's the rents? Ordinance. To ignore ordinance. Ignore, ignore, ignorant. To ignore ordinance. Okay, order. Ignoring order. We're talking order. What's the original order? Council Court of Morocco. So they have willful ignorance. They're trying to ignore the original origin of law. Let's read willful, per law. Mother? Willful, proceeding from a conscious motion of the will, voluntary. Voluntary, Vol voluntary. yes. Voluntary. Okay, good, thank you. Case law. All right, thank you, Mother. Well, let's go ahead and continue from here. Intractable, having a headstrong dis disposition to act by the rule of contradiction. All right, thank you, Mother. All right. Willful means proceeding from a conscious motion of the will. Voluntary, okay? So what does that mean? Their consciously, their motion is to have no motion, but they're consciously, consciously impeding the forward motion of constant court. No worries, no worries. You can have that willful ignorance if you want to, but what are we, what are we really talking about? Intractable, having a headstrong disposition. That's the United States of America, the United States, and there's several franchisees, call themselves, call themselves the state of, have a headstrong disposition to act by the rule of contradiction. So it's contradiction, right? It's a contradiction of the rule of law. They're using legality and statutes of a private municipal corporation of the Act of Congress 1871 that set up a 10 mile square corporation to function through it as a shell company. So everything they've done is in contradiction of law. 
So they're trying to now be what? Headstrong disposition. That's willful ignorance. They're intentionally undermining law, mother's law, nature's law of what? The principles of republic constitutions and treaties as it relates to sovereignty of birthrights. All right? So we're talking willful ignorance regarding the court orders to mitigate the friendly application of difference. What's the friendly application of difference? What's the first application of difference? Constitution. Most must understand the first friendly application is through your state of facts, your constitution, which now sets up the jurisdiction and calls the court. In conjunction with the constitution principles, right? which is the friendly application, political state rights. What's the political state rights? The jurisdiction of your state based upon the latitude, longitude that sets up the jurisdiction. So now you have what's called political state rights. Political, political, political state rights. Causal relations per the bilateral treaty of peace and friendship, 1836, article 20, 21, and 24. What's happening in article 20? because they fail to come and petition cost the court and which they're obligated to do through Article 20 of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship that says the council shall make the decision, counselor notification and access, etc. Anytime foreigners have an application of difference, the foreigners, right, with Moors, they, the foreigners must petition a Moroccan council or Moroccan cost the court. Because the original jurisdiction is Morocco, the more Morocco, more land, it's more land. Original jurisdiction. Okay, now including, we won't, we won't go to the articles, right? More shall have a basic understanding, we won't go to that right now. Including the Charter of the United Nations, 1945, Article 73. Why is that important, more? Let's go to it, find out. Okay, here's the United Nations Charter of the year 1945, Article 73, all right? It's Chapter 6, somehow the mothers read, Chapter 6 of the United Nations Charter, Article 73. It's a very important article, Moors must understand it, it relates to indigenous rights, okay? So if I have the mothers read from starting at Chapter Six, excuse me, <laughs> chapter 11, I do apologize, chapter 11, thank you very much, all right, chapter 11 is very important, all right? Declaration okay. regarding non-self-governing territories, article 73, members of the United Nations which have or assume responsibilities for the administration of territories whose people have not yet attained a full measure of self-government recognize The principle that the interests of the inhabitants of these territories are paramount and accept as a sacred trust the obligation to promote to the utmost within the system of international peace and security established by the present charter the well-being of the inhabitants of these territories and to this end a to ensure with due respect for the culture of the people's okay so hold up so what are we talking about? Let's break down that because it's kind of a, not necessarily a long read, but we want to make sure we're, we're staying on topic. So chapter 11, declaration regarding non-self-governing territories. What are they talking about? These are, they're talking about the indigenous aboriginal people of land who either governments were usurped or governments that they're putting together at this time. So it would be our more subjects. Our well, no, it'd be Moorish nationals who are putting together a government okay. that's not necessarily recognized by the UN just yet. So they, they claim, they say it's non self governing territories, but once Moors are putting together their government, we are self governing, but they wrote this in 1945. Okay? Now Moors in the 21st century are putting together a state provincial government. We're self governing, but we must still use Article 73 to our advantage. Okay, we'll learn why, learn why just here in a moment, all right?
So, United States of America is responsible for what? Since they usurped the Moors, they assume responsibility for the administration of territories whose people have not yet attained a full measure of self-government, recognizing the principle that the interests of the inhabitants of these territories are paramount. What's paramount? Our interests as Moors. And accept as a sacred trust the obligation to promote the utmost within the system of international peace and security established by the present charter, the well-being of the inhabitants of these territories. What does that mean? That the foreigners that's in Morocco have an obligation to work with us as the indigenous aboriginal people of the land. They have an obligation. We're going to learn about that. Okay, Mother, if you can read section 8. A. What's the... Go up a little bit. The first... Just above A. The first line. Oh, okay. That's to this that. end, well, the well-being of the inhabitants of these okay, territories... Let's right okay, okay well, let's start... Uh, okay, well, let's start uh, right here at the... At the that's, I just got there. No, so for the video, that way, because we got to cut it now. Okay. All right, okay. So, okay, Mom, start right here at the... The well-being of the inhabitants of these territories, and to this end, to ensure with due respect for the culture of the people's concern, their political, economic, social, and educational advancement, their just treatment, and their protection against abuses. Stop. Okay, Mom, more. What are we learning so far? These are the obligations of the member states of the United Nations and any non-member states who claim to have a state, here are the obligations of foreigners, okay, in Morocco. A, to ensure with due respect for the culture of the peoples concerned, their political, that's your state, economic, social, and educational advancement, their just treatment, and their protection against abuses. So right now, they're out there abusing Moors who are putting together their governments, or Moors who claim to have even a de facto government, they're still abusing Moors who are non-self-governing. But yet, claiming Moors are trying to claim that they're Moors on the record, for the record, the United States of America still has an obligation to work even with de facto Moors, much less de jure Moors. That must be understood, Moors. Right here, we are protected by the United Nations Charter. Okay? Against what? Abuses. Guess what's an abuse as a subject matter? The jab. If, in fact, we say based upon our political state rights, Moors, Moors nationals don't have to take the jab. Why? State rights. That simple. State rights. Okay? Let's continue. Section B. B. To develop self government take due account of the political aspirations of the peoples and to assist them in the progressive development of their free political institutions according to the particular circumstances of each territory and its peoples and their varying stages of advancement. This is very important for us to understand. To develop self-government, to take due account of the political aspirations of the peoples. What peoples? Moors and there are more states, and to assist them in the progressive development of their free political institutions according to the particular circumstances of each territory and its peoples and their varying stages of advancement. Their varying stages of advancement. Their varying stages of advancement. You see that, Morris? As Morris put together their state provincial governments, the foreigners have an obligation since they usurped us. And through what's called a post dominion per consanguinity, we're now coming back into original status, in personal status of utilizing the states through our sovereignty that the United States of America and the United States have an obligation to do what? Understand that through our political aspirations, Moors have political aspirations of the people. The United States of America is obligated to do what? To assist them. How can they assist us? Get the hell out of our way. 
Stop usurping us. Stop discriminating against us. Stop molesting us. Let's just start right there. That's how they can help us. Stop trying to put up roadblocks. Stop trying to create impediments. Stop doing what they call supervening and possibility of performance of the treaty. That's how they can help us. Let's get back to point. And to assist them, who's the them, the Moors, and the progress development of their free political institutions. What does free mean? Autonomous governments. Autonomous. According to their particular circumstances. Our circumstances are what? We don't want the jab? That's all right. Of each territory. What's our territory? That's your latitude, longitude, your constitution. You don't have a constitution, you have no jurisdiction, meaning you have no territory. And as peoples in their varying stages of advancement, it's very important to understand more. Okay, let's go on to section C. C, to further international peace and security. Okay, Morris. C, to further international peace and security. Wait a minute, why is that sentence so short? You know why? Because the foreigners in Morocco have an obligation to the United Nations Charter. That is the policy and procedure they must follow. Or they're going to receive sanctions from the United Nations Charter. But more importantly, guess who they're going to receive sanctions from most likely first? More states through our contempt of court orders. That must be understood. So the United States of America and the United States and their several states have an obligation to what? International peace and security. What's the peace? Treaty of peace and friendship. That's international law. That maintains the peace. Okay, mother, go to section D, please. To promote constructive measures of development, to encourage research and to cooperate with one another and when and where appropriate with specialized international bodies with a view to the practical achievement of the social, economic, and scientific purposes set forth in this article. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mother. All right, let's go back and read to comprehend. Okay, the United States of America and the United States is obligated to what? As well as the Moore State to promote constructive measures of development. More than developing states to encourage research and to cooperate with one another and when and where appropriate with specialized international bodies with a view to the practical achievement of the social, economic, and scientific purposes set forth in this article. Right? So what are we talking about? The United States of America and the United States is obligated to work with the Moors, and the Moors are obligated to even work with the United States of America. Keep in mind, it's a bilateral treaty, how we're supposed to treat them, and they're supposed to treat us, okay? What are the international bodies? Those are the organs. When Moors study international law, the organs are all the committees, such as the Rights of Indigenous People, the Convention of Eliminating Racial Discrimination, Women's Rights, etc. All right? Those are all the declarations. All those declarations have committees that oversee those declarations. Moors have to study international law. Okay? All right, let's go on to section C. Excuse me, E. To transmit regularly to the Secretary General for information purposes subject to, lim to such limitation as security and constitu constitutional considerations may require statistical and other information of a te technical nature relating to economic, social, and educational conditions in the territories for which they are respectively responsible, other than those territories to which chapters 12 and 13 apply. All right, thank you, Mother. As we get close to wrapping up. All right, thank you, Mother Nicole. Sorry. All right, no worries. Make sure you watch the rest of the video. I will. I will. Thank you. All right. Okay, let's go back and get an understanding. Section E, to transmit regularly to the Secretary General for information purposes. 
subject to such limitation as security and constitutional considerations may require. You see, Moors, it's all about the Constitution. When the Moors reach out to the United Nations Secretary General, he's going to ask you about what? Your Constitution. If you don't have a Constitution, you can't even talk to the UN. That's the truth. Constitution consideration may require and other information of a technical nature related to economic, social, and educational conditions in the territories for which they are respectively, respectively responsible other than those territories which the chapters uh, 12 and 13 apply. So Morris must understand at home, when you start talking about Chapter 11, Declaration Regarding Non-Self-Governing Territories, in Article 73 is a very powerful article that the United States of America and the United States is obligated to. But so are more states. More states will be obligated to this as well. As soon as we claim to have a state, we immediately, under compulsory jurisdiction, come under the obligation of the United Nations Charter, whether we like it or not. It secures our state rights. Keep in mind, Morris, the word state is a political word. It's a contemporary word. It's basically a pass-through, okay? It allows the e-state to be able to function through the state. It's a middleman, okay? That's how we function with other states around the world, through the e-state, okay? All right. Okay. Now that we have a basic understanding of Article 73, we continue the reading, and a breach of the Vienna Convention, 1969, Article 53 and 61. What are these articles about? Okay, let's go to the Vienna Convention of 1969, okay? Now we've read this article several times. Article 53 talks about just cogent, right? But there cannot be what? Any derogation is permitted. No derogation is permitted to undermine international law. That's including the United Nations Charter. United States of America cannot undermine the United Nations Charter. United States of America and the United States can't undermine the treaties. United States of America cannot undermine even the Constitution of Moors. United States of America and the United States cannot undermine declarations that came out of the United Nations. Okay? All right, now let's go down to now. Article 61, remember now, it talks about and 61, let's go to 61. Okay. Article 61, is what we scroll down to now. Article 61, the Vienna Convention, 1969. Mother, can you read that for me, please? One, a supervening impossibility of performance. One, a party may invoke the impossibility of performing a treaty as a ground for terminating or withdrawing from it if the impossibility results from the permanent disappearance or destruction of an object indispensable for the execution of the treaty. If the impossibility is temporary, it may be invoked only as a ground for suspending the operation of the treaty. Number two. Impossibility of performance may not be invoked by a party as a ground for terminating, withdrawing from, or sus suspending the operation of a treaty if the impossibility is the result of a breach by that party, either of an obligation under the treaty or of any other international obligation owed to any other party to the treaty. All right, thank you, Mother. Let's go back and break it down just a little bit. Article 61, supervening and possibility of performance. Supervening and possibility of performance of what? The treaty. What else? Our Moorish Constitution. Okay? What else? Our birthright under consanguinity. The United States of America and the United States. And their several franchisees are doing what? Supervening the impossibility of performance of our birthright. But from a political word, it's called treaties and constitutions. 
which is jurisprudence and common law. They're intervening that, creating an impediment, okay? So what are we talking about? Number one, a party may invoke the impossibility of performing a treaty as a ground for terminating or withdrawing from it if the impossibility results from the permanent disappearance or destruction of an object indispensable for the execution of the treaty. What's important to understand here for? There's an object indispensable. An object indispensable. What's the object? The United States of America and the United States and their franchisees is the object. They are the object based upon their third state. Remember, we learned about third state, their municipal corporations are the objects doing what? Supervening the impossibility of performing the treaties and constitutions. Okay, we must understand that. So when we put that in our documents, supervening impossibility of performance, they know exactly we're talking about Article 61. All right? Number two, impossibility of performance may not be invoked by a party of the ground for terminating, withdrawing from, or suspending the operation of a treaty if the impossibility is the result of a breach by that party either of an obligation under the treaty or of any other international obligation owed to any other party to the treaty. What's happening? You gotta understand, the Moors cannot terminate or suspend or withdraw from the treaty. And neither can the colonists, i.e. the foreigners that call themselves the citizens of the United States of America or the citizens of the United States, pick one, they're all foreigners. They cannot terminate withdraw or suspend the treaty either. What does this mean? This means we got to get back to what? Negotiations under international law, get back to norms of international law and deal with it through what? Consular court. So they cannot do anything to the treaty. If they're trying to abridge the treaty, we get back to consular court to deal with the subject matter. If consular court does not prevail, then we immediately take it to the United Nations Secretary of uh, state, all right, Secretary General, I should say, all right? Okay, so now we have a basic understanding of the Vienna Convention of 1969, Article 53 and 61, et cetera. Okay, now here's what the court says now. The contempt of court sanctions pertain to John Doe, Sarah Smith, Officer Williams, employer's company name, governor's name, and state of and pursuance to the Act of Alcacera, 1906, Article 102, is to stand conviction, and each foreigner shall be sentenced to a $25,000 fine, keep in mind, this is a placeholder board, okay, to be paid in silver coin, which is the real lawful money, or a cashier's check, to the consul court made out to MSGN consul court within 25 days, this is just a, a, a abbreviation, right, of whatever the Moors come up with, right, as, as uh, their state government, okay? I just put a placeholder here, all right? Order this Islamic date of 11 Rabbi Al-Awal 1443, that's the Islamic, Islamic calendar date, all right? So what's important to understand here, Moors? Keep in mind, I said this is a two-page document. We typically have four pages. Why is it four pages? Because Moors still have to expand on the contempt of court order. You got to get into some explanation of more about what the contempt was all about, as well as understand more than home. APAC has a document that breaks this down a little bit more based upon the fines and penalties. You'll understand more when you read APAC's document on how these penalties work. We're getting to more uh, interpretation of how it works, okay? Because we got we have different breakdowns of what the fine is going to be for each individual versus what the fine's gonna be for the company, versus what the fine's gonna be for the governor, versus what the fine's gonna be for the state. They're all different amounts, different fines, okay? All right, so. Right here is where the council court was signed. Placeholder name, right? Kazi, chief judge, council court, more state government name, full name. Then you put your email address here, that way they can correspond. Consul.court at more state government name, that's where they would go, gov.org, or more than home, 
create a concert.court at msgngov.org. That's the acronym of what, what, what your state would be. How did I come up with that acronym? Morris State Government Name MSGN. M S G N. That's how I came up with the acronym, okay? It is a placeholder. So more than home, you create your own, okay? What's missing on this document? This right here, Morris, right here is where the state seal will go. You you embossed your state seal right here, Morris, okay? Because the seal, the seal of your provincial state government, the seal will go right here. Why? Because that's where you derive your delegation authority order. Okay? Okay, Morris. Let's go back to the top. Just read it. In a matter of constructive contempt of court, a judge writes sentence, the more state government named plaintiff versus the foreigners, contemptors now, status has changed. It's a direct order, okay? Just order. This contempt of consul court order in the jurisdiction of the more state government name, the state, on October 18, 2021, is hereby adjudged and served. The disobedience to the injunctive relief order dated October 1st, 2021, shall invoke this constructive contempt with prejudice. The consul court shall enforce sanctions and pursuance To the Act of Algiers of 1906, Articles 101 and 102, the Council Court finds the foreigners that are now the contemptors status change, willful ignorance regarding the court orders to mitigate the friendly application of difference in conjunction with the constitutional principles, political state rights, council relations for the bilateral treaty of peace and friendship, 1836, articles 20, 21, and 24, including the Charter of the United Nations, 1945, article 73, and a breach of the Vienna Convention, 1969, article 53 and 61, etc. The contempt of court sanctions pertain to the foreigners in pursuance to the Act of Algeria of 1906, article 102, is to stand conviction and each foreigner shall be sentenced to a $25,000 fine of $25,000 to be paid in silver coin or a cashier check to the consul court made out to MSGN consul court within 25 days. Okay, Morris? So what are we talking about as we wrap up? As we start understanding this snapshot of where we're going with all this, Morris, okay, as we start to wrap up now, we're going to go step by 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 step, okay? What do those steps really look like? You got your state of fact judicial notice, which is mediation, which is your Circle 7 exhibits, which is your discovery friendly application, right? Number two, Injunctive relief order, which is arbitration before litigation. Okay, so we went from mediation, trying to talk to them, trying to now do what we call diplomatic relations. Now it's going into arbitration because we have to send an injunctive relief order. It's arbitration before litigation, so now it's starting to escalate. What are you using again? Circle 7 exhibits. Discovery friendly application. We're talking applications. What are the application, the exhibits, as well as each one of these documents? Okay? What's number three? We're talking contempt of court order. That's number three, which is what? Fines, i.e., lawsuit litigation. Taj Bay always says, when they touch you, make it cost them. Taj Bay always says, well, bring a suit towards them, a lawsuit. Well, how do you do that? This is what he's talking about. Contempt of court order through your de jure state provincial government, which is fines, i.e. lawsuit, which is litigation. That's how you bring your suit more. We're teaching you how to bring a suit to the foreigners, but doing it in what you call it a de jure way. By using what? Act of Algeceres, Articles 101 and 102, which is talking about fines, penalties, and confiscations. That's number three. When they don't adhere to that, what's next? Then we start getting into what we call 
Number four, surety bond lien on property. These are the penalties. Okay? What are we using? Treaty of Madrid, 1880, Article 11. We'll talk about that. Act of Algeciras, 1906, Article 60. We'll talk about that, which is the CAD, the Morris D. Tax Commissioner. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the notice of lien surety bond that you place on the deed. Le lien levy against the warranty deed. We'll talk about that. I'm just trying to get more of a snapshot and understanding where we're going with all this, okay? What's number five? Number five, erga omnis, principles of international law. We'll learn about that. Meaning towards all or towards everyone. I tell everybody, go look up this word, right? Which is talking about state rights, more state rights. When we're talking about putting a lien on the warranty deeds of the foreigners, okay? Which is talking about trespass in land, which is law, trespass in land law, okay? We'll talk about that. Then we get into confiscation, which is the sale of property to satisfy the court sanctions. So what are all those principles that we just talked about? We talked about five principles. We're talking about mediation, litigation, fines, penalties, and confiscations, right? Which is Article 102 of the Act of Alvarez, 1906. Article 102 talks about what? Fines, penalties, and confiscations. What are we doing? We're building up to it. You see right here? We're building up to the contempt of court. Notice of surety bond. Number five, surety bond lien on deeds. Number six, trespass on land. Number seven, confiscation of property. Number eight, sale of property. Number nine, to do what? Satisfy court sanctions. We're going to learn about that more because we have the power of the original courts of Morocco. So as I close, what should we take from this? Moors have to study international law. Moors must come back into the conscious consciousness of our ancient mothers and fathers who had government prior to 1492. When we do that, we'll be able to maintain the sovereignty through our states and start taking back our land claims as this talks about in the rights of indigenous people. How do we enforce the Declaration of Rights of Indigenous People? The answer is consular court. But you can't have a consular court without a state. If you're talking state, you're talking constitution. If you're talking constitution, you're talking about jurisdiction, the territory, and now being able to utilize consular court through the state to maintain your sovereign rights. If you don't want to get stuck with the jab as a subject matter, then you better start understanding international law and use discipline to put together your more states. I end with that.